Hey and welcome to another Ice Age 2 review. We've got something really rather special today. This is by Helgen. It's ages since we've done a Helgen model. And it is the Helgen Class 128. Mm -hmm. Yes, I hear you say. I hear you exclaim. What is a Class 128? Well, I didn't even know such a thing existed until the other day when I was just browsing through the stock on Hatton's website and saw this and thought, oh my gosh. Look how strange, yet how nice that is. I've just got to have one. So here we are with the new, newly designed Helgen packaging as well. This particular Class 128 is um, it's a very weathered version. It doesn't say on the label, but it is. 21 pin ready, that's nice. 21 pin DCC. Uh, class 128, uh, number 8941? No, that must be the model code. I think that's the model code. I think... This actual uh, unit is M55995, maybe? I'm not too sure. We'll find out, won't we? So, the Class 128, what's it about? Well, it's very, very obscure, very strange. Only 10 of them were built. 10! I mean, you know, <laughs> that's really quite low in terms of numbers of trains built. Uh, they were built by the Gloucester Railway Carriage and Wagon Company in 1959. Uh, the engines were really quite weak, only 230 horsepower, uh, about similar, maybe a little bit less than like um, a Class 121 uh, rail car or something. Uh, 70 miles per hour, top speed, 0 to 60 in about 4 minutes, <laughs> um, exclusively for parcels and bikes. No passenger accommodation at all. None. No seats inside. Apart from the driver, obviously. No seats for passengers at all. Just racks and racks and racks for parcels and then storage areas at each end for bikes. Push bikes. Mountain bikes. Um, they were, I think, withdrawn 1991 and none were preserved. So that's quite sad because they're really quite nice. I think you'll like them. I think they're quite quirky. And it's a real shame that none were kept at all. I mean, they could have bought one and shoved it somewhere. But no, none made it into preservation. So let's open the box and see what we get. Okay, so it's Halgen's newly redesigned packaging. Uh, it's very, very similar to Backman and Hornby's latest approach with this sort of sleeve um, and then like the block of ice thing in the middle. It's not bad, it's quite nice. I'm not too sure why they've adopted it. Maybe it's cheaper than doing it the other way. But to be honest, I did prefer the older style packaging. If you can remember, it was like a, a really big box that you lifted the lid off and then a beautiful foam insert. That was just luxury. <laughs> it was really luxurious, very, very nice. But maybe that's why they canceled it because it was probably quite expensive. I don't know. Um, all that matters is that they've changed it. This is the packaging we have for this particular model. So, we just slide the sleed off, and then as I say, you've got the locomotive frozen solid in this block of ice in the center. Oh, and then we've got a load of gumph as well. So let's just put that to one side. Okay, what's this? Oh, it's, it's not too bad actually, it's not that much. Um, 8,900 number series. Okay, glass the carriage and wagon class 128. Thank you for purchasing this Helgen model of the Class 128. This highly detailed working repli replica will give you years of pleasure and reliable operation if it is handled with care and regularly serviced. This 176 scale model is designed to operate from 12 volts direct current supply from a model railway transformer. The wheel sets are for 00 gauge track, which is the same as HO uh, track. The model will run over curved track down to a minimum radius of 15 inches. But due to its fine scale wheel profile, more to satisfactory winning will be achieved over curved track formations of larger radius. Should that be radii? I'm not too sure. Anyway, what they're saying there is that yes, it will handle quite tight curves, but really the the more gentle the, the bend, the better. And that's that's fine. We we understand that. Oh, nice five pole motor. And heavy die-cast chassis ensure running characteristics that will meet most modelers' demands. I'm sure it's going to be an exquisite model, trust me. Halgen are pretty good. Uh, the locomotive should initially undergo a running-in period to allow all the moving components to seat properly. It's suggested that the model is left to run for at least 30 minutes in each direction at a medium speed. 
Please ensure that all gears, bearings and axles are lubricated. This has been undertaken during manufacture, but periodic cleaning and light re-lubrication using plastic compatible oils and greases is suggested. Okay, we don't need to read any more than that. This is very nice of them to include this though. It really is very well written. It's better than Hornby's and Backman's. It very, very nicely shows you, tells you how to care for your model and what to do. So that's really quite special. Uh, then we've got like a, an explosion of all the parts here, um, just in case you needed to reorder anything. I've never needed to do it yet. Um, and then that's the actual, oh, that's the body and that's the chassis. Yeah, okay, that's fine. And then on the back, I, I'm assuming, oh this, oh, this is nice. I thought this was going to be like a little guarantee thing, warranty. But no, it's information about it. That's quite cool. Uh, weight, 41 tonnes, output 230, I told you maximum speed, 70 miles an hour. Uh, Pre-nationalisation companies such as the GWR have shown the possibilities, of course, yes, with their rail cars, their uh, parcel ones, the parcel express ones, of using self-propelled parcel cars with the AEC vehicles. BR adopted the principle when considering orders during the modernisation plan of the late 1950s. No need for the apostrophe there. Orders were placed with Cravens for three cars and with Gloucester carriage and wagon for six cars for the Western region and four cars for the London Midland region. The six Western region versions entered service in 1960. They were fitted with centre gangway connectors with offset driving cabs and three pairs of sliding doors. I Now, in researching this, because it is such an odd machine, this class 128, I have found, no, I found no videos on it at all. I found quite a few people on YouTube that have already done a review, but I found no actual running footage of it at all. So if you do find any, please let me know. Someone must have filmed one somewhere. What I did find was some photographs, and the photos are so bizarre, because they'll like have this unit coupled up to the front of a passenger train, and then it will go, it will pull the train. And then they've had it coupled up to like a rake of other parcel wagons that aren't as big. And again, it will pull the train. It, it's the thing that takes everything along. It, it holds the train. It's the loco, so to speak. Really, really bizarre. Um, I, that's why I just had to get it. I just thought it was so strange. So it's really nice of them to include that there. There's, I won't read it all because we'll be here forever, but it's really nice of them to do that. Um, I'm, I really am impressed with Helgen. They, they're churning out some quality stuff of late. So, Let's just um, slide off this outer sleeve. It is so sunny today. Look how well packaged this is. Oh my gosh. Oh, hang on. Nope, I didn't mean to, didn't mean to do that. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Is this going to... Is this going to fall away? This is bizarre. This is really bizarre. Look at this. Wow. What packaging! It's like they've taken the the, uh, the thing that Backman have been doing for years and the thing that Hornby have just started doing and they've expanded on it, they've made it a little bit different. They've... Whoa! That is heavy! Whew! Oh my gosh! Don't swear, don't swear. Whoa! That is seriously heavy, I don't think I've ever lifted such a heavy model. What are these accessories here? Just peel them away really carefully. Is that everything? I think that's everything, isn't it? The rest is just, yeah, the rest is just packaging, just foam and stuff, yeah. Okay. So, we've got some accessories. Ah, some couplers, they'll be uh, useful. And then some like little hooks or chain links. Yeah, possibly, yeah, chain links. Um, okay, not bad. But then the actual model, oh my. Gosh, is it heavy. And they've even put this in like its own little bag, which I'm just going to slide out really carefully. Whoa. Look at that, people. Have you ever seen anything like it? Let me just put that out of shot. Okay, let's have a look at this bad boy. I've honestly never, ever held anything like this in my hands. Just, I'm not, you've got the exhausts there. This is a um, relatively heavily weathered version. Uh, it, it just looked really, really nice, and it was a bargain price. I just thought, 
Well, I really like it. I'm going to go for it. We've got sprung buffers as well. Oh, this is beautiful. This is absolutely... Oh my gosh, look at the detail on that buffer beam. Can you see all that piping? It's all weathered as well. Again, sprung buffers. We could make those a little bit greased up, make them a little bit more realistic. And then look at the twin exhausts. I bet it's got working lights. It's going to, surely. They wouldn't do all this and not put working lights on. The doors do not open, but they are incredibly well detailed. Just look at that logo. Parcel service. How cool, it, how cool would it be to have this just running around your layout, guys? Just look at this. Isn't it stunning? What's it like on the other side? Whoa. I never noticed so much underframe detail before. Even the bogey detail. They really have gone to town on this. I don't know where they've got that, that information from. I guess they must have found some blueprints or photos or something. But it looks really well detailed. Look at that. Just look at all this. Oh my gosh. Have you ever seen such detail underneath the model before? I don't think even Batman go to this sort of length. Look at all that. Look, you can see the radiator grills and flywheels and the transmission and everything. It's, it's really nice. This is well worth the money, folks. It is just so well done. Halgen, you keep doing it again and again. You really are giving Batman and Hornby a run for their money. Again, I'm assuming that there's going to be lights there. We've got rivets. We've got metal bits where there's supposed to be metal bits. Look at the roof. It's just, and it's so heavy. You should see that. You should see my right arm. The muscle is bulging, in, in terms of straining to hold this model up. It's just so heavy. I'm not joking. And, and Kestrel, you know the the uh, Halgen made Kestrel, the Hawker Sidley Four Thousand. That's a heavy model. This is a, is just as heavy, if not even heavier. I have never lifted something so heavy. And I just love how quirky it is. Look at that. Imagine that running around your layout, just on its own, quite happily, trundling down an express line or even around a branch line. It would just run and look so beautiful. Look, window wipers. Look, all the weathering there and the rivets. It's such a quirky thing, isn't it? I love it. I really do. Oh, do you know... I just can't wait to put it on the track and see how it runs. Hey, and thank you for joining me over at the layouts. Um, we've got the loco here. Do I put it on this way or do I put it on that way? We'll put it on this way because I was looking through uh, Google Images for this particular class and I found quite a few where you could see the front of the locomotive being this end here without the exhausts. So. I'm going to assume that that's the correct way, but as with any modern diesel unit, there's not really a right or wrong. So, you can run it in either direction. Um, I think the exhausts do look cool, but we'll leave them at the back end for now, and we'll have this as the front. Although there's no little driver, I've just noticed, they haven't included a driver, but there is a seat there for one, so that's really quite nice. Oh, do you know, it just looks so quirky. I just love it. <laughs> I really do. Such a good buy. Okay, let's pick a direction and give it some juice. <sighs> wow. As smooth as a baby's bum. And the lights lit up red as well. Let's watch it come back to us. Here we go. Oh, can you hear that? Is the microphone actually picking up just how smooth that mechanism is? Let's try some slow speed. Oh my gosh. Slower? <laughs> it just cut out. 
That is incredible for DC. And it's 21 pin DCC ready as well, folks. This is just amazing. Right, let's actually get it running then. Here we go. Oh my gosh, it's so smooth. I knew it was going to be. I mean, it's Halgen, and they haven't made a bad motor yet, as far as I'm aware. But that mechanism for DC, it's just so smooth. Do you know, I think I even saw a cab light then, but I'm not sure. Just listen to it, listen to it. It's like it's singing. It's just a really, really gentle note. Oh, folks, this is, this is beautiful. Okay, it's been running like that quite gently now for a while, so I'm just going to give it a little bit of a speed increase. Not much, just a little bit more power. And yeah, it still sounds beautiful. Here she comes. Gosh, it's such a hot day today. <laughs> Whew, roasting. Okay, so let's slow it right down, right down, right down. Beautiful. Oh, I can hear it, can you hear everybody cutting the grass? <laughs> it's just typical, isn't it? Okay, let's change direction then. She's run for a good 30 minutes in that direction, so it's time to reverse direction. Nice and gently, and away she goes. Right, I'll be back in about half an hour. Okay, slow, 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 and stop. Yes, apologies for the background noise of fly mow, lawn mowers and um, trimmers and stuff, but it is really hot so everyone's out in the garden. Okay, so what do we think? Well, so far I'm really impressed folks. This model is just, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's just, it's just quality. So nice, it's so, so nice. I absolutely love it. Um, in real life, they would have ran with some additional units, as I say, some some goods wagons. Well, not goods wagons, but parcel vans and stuff like that. Maybe the odd coach. I've seen the photos. So I'm going to couple up a few to her, and then we'll get her to go around the layout with those and see how she performs. But come on. I mean, we're not expecting anything bad, are we? Right, well, I've had a good look around all the stock that I have available to hand, because a lot of it is still packed away ready for the new layout. So I can't, I don't have access to everything at the moment, but I did find a couple. If we just get the Class 1T8 to uh, shuffle up a little bit. There we go, that'll do, thank you. I'm going to whack on um, this, it's uh, actually an intercity. Uh, well, I don't know what you call it, it's basically just a luggage car. I think it might be called a full brake. 
Basically, it is designed to go at the end of a train, and it was only used for, for parcel storage and bike storage, pretty much like this, but it's unpowered. Oh, hang on, what am I doing? <laughs> There's no coupler. We're gonna have to open the little bag of accessories just here, and put a coupler on it. Right, two ticks. Okay, we're back. A coupling is on the back. It was quite fiddly to get in, but at least it's a nice, really small, slim, tench knot coupler in a NEM socket. So that's really quite cool. There we go, that's coupled up. And then the other thing, the final one, and don't judge me for this, this is actually from the Thomas and Tank range. <laughs> it was just the perfect size, okay. Oh, but, oh gosh. I actually took the coupling off the back of that one. Oh, right, fail. Try again. Three, two, one, you're yeah, back in the room. Right, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. Um, I have deliberately put some, some uh, gangway doors on the end of this intercity unit so that it really does belong at the back of a train. Meaning that I put this parcel wagon, well, it's not technically a parcel wagon, it's part of Thomas's breakdown train, but it's basically the same design and style as a parcel wagon. So I put this parcel wagon in the middle, and then of course we have the class 128 parcels DMU at the front. Now it looks a really odd setup, I grant you that, but it's actually pretty realistic. If you Google uh, image search class 128, you'll come across images very, very similar to this. It's actually quite a a common formation for this particular class, which is really bizarre. But that's why I love it. It's just so different. I've never seen, even at exhibition layouts, I haven't seen anything like this going around. Well, obviously not with a Thomas the Tank Engine wagon and an Intercity, but you get the idea, okay? You get the idea. I'm going to have to now invest in some matching rolling stock for this particular unit, aren't I? So look forward to that in a running video I'll do in the future. But yeah, it, hey, it just gives you an excuse to buy more stuff, as if we needed one. So, let's see how she runs with a load. And the answer is very well, actually. Very well indeed. It might look a little bit odd, we've already established that, but just look how well it runs. It actually looks really cool. No passengers, just parcels. So in conclusion, all I can really say is that Halgen are now a major player. They are seriously churning out some quality stuff. This Class 128 is no exception. It is it's just exquisite. The smoothness of operation, the detail, the livery application, everything about it is just stunning. It's really hard to fault it. And if you want one, what are you waiting for?
Ta da! Hey, and welcome to another IC82 review. Uh, yep, it's what the channel's famous for, so we're going to crack right on with. Yes, I know it's a little bit odd. Very unorthodox. We've got a Connect Suburban Class 466 here, and there's a reason I've got hold of this, and somebody called Liam is definitely going to recognise it. <laughs> here we go. This very slippery piece of paper says, Hello IC2, my name is Liam and I have watched your channel for a while now. It was your videos that made me rebuild my, my old Mill Railway. I have sent you a Hornby Class 466 Connect Suburban train for you to do a review on and use around your layout. It runs okay, but it might need a little bit of work tonight. Could you please send it back by the end of May? If there are any problems, then please email me. Sent by Liam Burns. So I've hidden, I've hidden his address and his email address there. But it has come all the way from Bonnie, Scotland. I'm not even going to attempt to do an accent because I'll just offend an entire nation. But here we have. Uh, well, it's yes. Why have I never looked at anything like this before? Uh, several reasons. One, this is actually quite an old model, and secondly, it's um, it's third rail. It's southeastern. It's nowhere near Cheshire. <laughs> That's for sure. So I've never got around to it. So thank you, Liam, so much for sending this in. Otherwise, I probably would never have gotten around to having a look at one. So you can tell from the packaging that this is this is quite old. This is 2003 slash 2004. That's when it was released. So it's not mega old. It's hopefully younger than most of my viewers, but it's certainly um, old enough to not be incredible detail. Um, we, we shall see in a moment when we open it and have a look. But as you can see from the packaging, it's definitely something home we don't do anymore. Which is a bit of a shame because look at all this lovely information you get on the front. First introduced to replace the old slam door trains on the Kent Link in 93, the network has offered a much needed and improved degree of comfort to the London commuter. I do think I've travelled on these before. Um, I used to have a mate that lived in West Dulwich and way back in like 2000, 2001. I used to catch, whenever I used to go down and see him, I used to catch these into uh, London Victoria. I'm sure it was London Victoria. They've got that really typical electric motor sound when they start going, that sort of... <laughs> there you go, folks. I don't often do set, uh, train sound effects, but that's what they sound like. It's just a very typical um, electric motor sound. I really liked them, I thought they were quite comfy, quite spacious, they're very nice. I've no idea what the model is like, so let's open the box and have a look. Okay, so very typical form of the packaging, uh, polystyrene insert, oh it's been a while since we've seen one of these. Nothing else, um, but then I think there was a, an instruction sheet uh, that Liam has very kindly included. So we take off this piece of card. Uh, Spin it round the right way up, and here we go. We've got the. Um, <laughs> I have. I actually have a wallet full of these. Um, I will show it you one day, but uh, not right now. Class four six six suburban train. So again, we've all seen this. We know what it's about. Let's have a look. Um, removing the power bogey to gain access to the motor. Should you ever need to repair or replace it, it even gives you hints and tips on how to replace the motor. Where to put tiny, tiny drops of lubrication and an alternative head code option. Wow, that's something I was not aware of, but I'm sure Liam has probably been aware of that. So, let's put that to one side. Here is the train itself. It's an EMU, I'm pretty certain about that. I'm pretty certain that the Class 466 is an EMU which stands for Electrical Multiple Unit. Basically, lots and lots of units all tied together, uh, not like literally with string, and with an electric motor powering the bogies. Good, I'm glad you're coming with me on that. Okay, so let's have a look at the motor one. Uh, these, these were called networkers. They were built between 1993 and 1994 uh, by British Rail. Uh, I'm not too sure where, I think it was a bit of all over the place. Um, this is obviously a British Rail Connect Southeastern, which then became um, Southeastern Trains, which then just simply became Southeastern, all one word. 43 of them were built. They were all two car sets, just like this. Uh, so you could obviously couple multiple together. So even though they came in, <laughs> even though they came in twos, 
you could couple both all together like that. So you could have four and then six and so on. I think when I was in London, I even saw one that was eight cars long. It was that big. Uh, top speed of 70 miles, 75 miles per hour, 804 horsepower engine. Uh, they ran on 750 volt third rail DCC. In fact, you can see the little pickup just there that would run on. That's called a shoe, by the way. It's not made by Timberland or Nike, but it is called a shoe. And that would run, that would pick up electricity from the third rail. And that's how they ran. Um, and yes, they were third rail, which is one of the, one of the reasons why I've never, I've never got one. So let's have a look at the model in detail. Okay, so let's have a look at them in detail then. This is definitely the heavier unit, so this has got to be the motor units, which means this is just the trailer, the dummy. Although, to be honest, despite being a trailer, you know, and having no motor, that is really heavy. Um, which is pretty impressive. It's definitely quite impressive. So, what can we, um, what can we see, what can we look at? Well, the front is very nice, just get a look at that. You've got the running number there, the class, 466, this is number 35. Um, what about the other unit? Let's have a, ah, right. So each individual unit has its own number. That's quite interesting. So we've got a 35 and a 20. You can see the Canex logo there. I don't know how accurate that is. It's, an, it's um, a railway operator I'm not familiar with, but I do notice the tiny little head code we have there. That's really good. Sorry, not head code. That's where the head code should go. We have the nice little um, the warning sign for the electric overhead system. Um, it looks like one of those Delna type couplers, doesn't it? Uh, it's probably, I'm probably totally wrong, but it does look like that very modern type of connector. It's really supposed to be quite good. I think it's used a lot on the continent. It does have working lights, apparently, so I'm looking forward to seeing those. Um, I cannot believe how much weight there is in this unit. Let's just go and have a look at that. So you can clearly see the motor there, and it does look quite old. It, does look, it certainly looks 2003 slash 2004. Very interesting way of connecting the units together. Probably not the most realistic way, but certainly does the job. Uh, detail at the back of the unit is probably not up to today's standards. We'd expect, oh, oh my gosh, I take it back. I was just gonna say, we expect this kind of thing to be made of rubber. And it is, it's actually rubber. In fact, it comes out. Ooh, we, can we go inside? Can we go inside? No. <laughs> okay, that's a shame. I'll try to bring that to you in series seven where we can actually take a tour of the trains. <laughs> it's not bad, it's not bad. I know that you're probably shaking your heads and thinking, mm, it's just not good enough these days, Will. And it's probably not. But bear in mind, this is a 2003 slash 2004 model. I mean, come on folks, this is at the time of filming over 10 years old. So it's pretty impressive, to be honest. The thing that impresses me the most is the weight. And I must also point out, you can see through the entire unit. And if I grab the other one as well, there we go. Oh, just get that, that little bit of polystyrene off. And I like that. Hornby are very good at doing that. Backman, not so good. Although they, they're getting better. They're getting better. They're watching my videos and they're learning. <laughs> They are getting better, yes. We won't talk about uh, the Class 150, but I'm pleased to say it has been redone and it's much better now. So yes, <sighs> sorry, bits of polystyrene everywhere. Gets really annoying. I can notice, I do notice that Liam hasn't done the head codes, or at least it looks like he hasn't, unless they light up as soon as the train starts to move. I'd be very impressed if that happens, but I don't think it will, we'll have to see. Hey folks, sorry, I just had to insert this. But as you can see, the destination plates clearly do exist. <laughs> um, many apologies for that, I don't know what happened. Maybe I just didn't notice them fall out of the box, or maybe they were still in the box and I noticed them days later, I don't know. But the destination plates are, are there, as you can see, and for some reason, Liam hasn't actually applied any of them. Um, I'm not going to, because I do believe that he should do that, but they are there, and as you can see, they're pretty cool, considering the age of this model. So yeah, quite impressive, I like that. And it, obviously, you get the chance to pick any destination plate you want, rather than it being preset out of the box. So again, that's quite cool. So yeah, right, onwards with the video. Really quite an interesting unit, don't you think? Just look at all the detail on the bottom there, around the bogey. And then, I love the underframe stuff. That's really quite 
posh. I do like that. Um, I wonder if it's really easy to get inside, because you do have such a good view of inside these units. You could easily seat passengers in those and make it look like it is a proper packed commuter train coming out of London, Victoria, or um, well, pick, any, pick any other pick any other random London, London station that they would have ran out of. I'm sure there's more than just Victoria. And that's really interesting. I bet you can. I'm not going to do it because it's Liam's and he wants it to be sent back, but um, I bet you can do that quite easily. But you can seat loads of passengers in there. You could probably even install interior lighting. Not lighting that runs off the track, but maybe some train tech lighting strips. That would be cool. That would be seriously impressive. Roof detail. Roof detail, roof detail. It's not too bad. It's pretty basic. But then I really have no idea what the roof of these models is supposed to be like. Um, the roof of this class, to be honest. I just haven't got a clue. Um, I do notice that the window wipers here seem really, really fiddly. And it looks like one little bit of plastic may have even come off there. Um, I shall look in... Nope, it's not in the packaging. And I don't see it anywhere else. So I'm really not too sure where that little bit of plastic has gone. Um, it does look like something's come off somewhere though. Um, what's it like on the other side? Sorry, the other end. Mm, as soon as the camera focuses... There we go. That, they seem to be intact there. They're both present, although one is looking a little bit sorry for itself. And about to snap off, so I'm not going to touch that again. They're not bad. They're really not bad. I think they're a smart train. I really do think they're a very smart train. I like them. I like them a lot. I have no idea how she's going to run. She's quite old, so we're going to have to go gentle. But let's go find out. Okay, thank you for joining me over at Layout. I'm um, just having a look at the bottom of the unit here, and I can no I noticed that the um, the powered bogey does use traction tyres. They're going to be quite old. There's a chance they might break, uh, and sadly, the traction tyres of old do have a habit of perishing and falling apart whilst running around a layout. But Liam does say she's going to run okay, or at least she should do. So fingers crossed, everything will be fine. We'll put it onto the outer loop today because that's just the nicest, it's fourth radius, it's really, really gentle. And um, I know it's not terribly realistic for have a, to have a train on that loop go in that direction, but you'll have to bear with me because I like doing it, so there. <laughs> and then I get the second unit coupled on as well. That's really quite rather nice. I do have the um, really nice high quality Gauge Master Combi controller linked up to this loop, so we should get some very, very smooth DC running. Just noticed a random hair on the... Oh no, it's not a hair, I think it's from the vacuum cleaner. Okay, right, let's give it some juice. Ooh! <laughs> wow! That was really gentle, wasn't it? Very impressive for DC, even if a little bit grindy. So let's flip direction and see what happens with that in that way. Oh, hey, look at that red light. Hey, Liam was right. That's really quite nice, you know, considering its age. I am very impressed. I honestly thought that we'd have to interrupt the review and she'd have to go off to Crew Works to have her whole service carried out. But I think she's going to be okay. Although I will take her to Crew Works for a service anyway. Um, just as a courtesy to Liam to say thank you. So, let's pick a direction, that would help. And let's see those headlights. Nope. <laughs> Try again. Oh. Oh, oh. Oh no, she doesn't. Oh, no, yep. Yeah. Oh. Uh, interesting. In this particular direction, she doesn't want to go. I'm not going to force her, just in case there's something wrong. No, that's not right. That's not right at all. But if we, if we send her in the other direction, she really is okay. No, she's not. No, no, she's... Oh, yeah. 
Hmm. Well, what can I say? Clearly, she's not quite right. To crew works, we must go. Okay, folks, welcome to um, the final part of this review then. This is the Class 466, as you know, and it's actually several days later. This model has just returned from Crew Works, where it's had some extensive work done on the bogies um, and the underframe. It wasn't running very well, as you saw. Uh, basically, what was happening was that the uh, traction was just non-existent. There are some fundamental flaws in the design of this particular model. Despite how nice it is, and do you remember me commenting on the weight of it? That's actually one of its problems. This entire underframe part here is metal. And that really adds a lot of weight to the model. And it's the same with the other unit. Again, an entirely metal underframe. That adds a lot of weight. But the problem with that is this entire train, this entire two-car train, is being driven by just one bogey. It's not actually this bogey, I think it might be that bogey. But out of that bogey, only two wheels are actually driving the train. Or, or at least were actually driving the train. And on those two wheels, one of the traction tyres had perished. So this entire train was being driven by one wheel. And the other wheel wasn't um, fastened very properly. It wasn't fastened uh, properly at all. It was just spinning freely. Um, I don't know whether the the axle was loose, or whether the wheel was just coming off with age or something, or whether it suffered some damage, I don't know. So that was glued back into place, and that axle now uh, rotates properly, and so both wheels on that axle are rotating properly, as they should. But we're still missing, um, we're still missing traction, to be honest. It, it's not a very good design. For a model of this size, and for how heavy it is, it should have more traction than this. So it's definitely, definitely due for an update. Um, but hopefully we have done enough to it now to get it actually working okay. So let's find out. See, that's already much better. If I just move the camcorder way back so that you can see right down the line. Just ignore that class weight over there, he's just playing with some drugs. Here we go. Nope, wrong way. Yep. Much better, and it'll, it'll, yes, it actually goes all the way around the bend. It didn't do that before, did it? Oh, it's not as happy going in this direction, though. And that is something that was discovered in the testing on the rolling road. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it push its train around. So I'm going to take this back unit off, take that one off. Oh, yes, that's definitely the one with the bogey, the motorized bogey. So we're going to put this unit at the front and then the motor uh, unit is going to push the train around the layout. It's a little bit unorthodox, but um, I'm sure it won't be too much of a problem. Let's just give it a bit of a... Yeah. Okay, so that's the direction it doesn't really want to go in. And this is the direction it does want to go in. So as you can see folks, <laughs> when you um, make a few modifications to this model and get it running in a direction that it's happy with, it's actually pretty good. Okay, here it comes. I'm going to give it a little bit more speed, actually. I think it can handle it.
Okay, so let's just slow it down, nice and gently. That's it. Um, and whilst that whilst that train was running in and getting all nice and warmed up and stuff, I did swap the uh, class of weights over and get those those mega boxes hauled out of the way. Um, well, what do I think? It's genuinely not a bad model. It's genuinely not too bad. It's well overdue for an update. It definitely needs updating. The, it's just not got enough traction, sadly. It really suffers from that, especially when things start to go wrong, such as the traction tyres perishing. Uh, better hurry up, because the <laughs> class of eight is coming around. Um, I, I, I would definitely recommend it, if you can see one, for a bargain price, and you know, you're happy that it's not, you don't mind that it's not going to be perfect. Definitely, it's, it's genuinely not a bad train. It, for 2004, its detail's really good, and I would recommend it if you can find it at a bargain price somewhere. But don't pay over the odds for it. It's probably only a matter of time until Hornby do decide to update it with new tooling and a better motor. Um, but I am very, very thankful to Liam for sending it in, and I can't get, I can't wait to get the video up online and get it sent back to him. So thank you for that. Which stands for electrical, mm, electrical, or ele electric multi, electrical multiple. Start again. Electrical multiple unit. Yes.